triades de Alta Tama. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Nicolas Nico. I'm the CEO and founder of Cluster. Welcome back to the Cluster and List uh, series of uh, seminars. We do these seminars on a regular basis, and the goal of those seminars uh, is to educate existing and new customers about Cluster and the uh, small tips and tricks that exist in different modules. Today we are going to talk about the quiz and surveys module and what we can do with this module, what are the characteristics, how we can configure it and play with that. And uh, then um, give some examples and then answer some questions. So let's start. So the agenda. First of all, we will overview the uh, functionality of uh, quiz and surveys. We do a demo. Uh, we will create some surveys, some online quizzes and exams. Uh, we'll do some teacher evaluation, and then we'll discuss about a bit about configuration, and we'll answer some uh, free, frequently asked questions, and we'll do some Q&A. So the vision we have about quizzes is basically is two things. From one side is to do online exams and tests. On the other side is to utilize classes to do surveys, questionnaires, satisfaction surveys, so we know that you can use a lot of free tools like uh, Microsoft Forms, Google, uh, Google uh, uh, questions or, or forms. Um, the beauty of Cluster is that uh, it keeps information about all the enrollments, about the school structure. So you, when you distribute any question, when you distribute online exams, you can do this automatically based on all the information you have in Cluster. People can log on to Cluster, can answer the quizzes. Students can um, take assessments and assignments using online quizzes, and those uh, marks from the quizzes will feed to the final gradebook. So this is basically the, uh, the goal of this module in Cluster, and this is the reason that uh, we have created this module. And uh, people have selected to use it instead of using the free modules that exist on the market. Um, in uh, office and uh, elsewhere. So, what you can do with this module? First of all, you can create questions and save those questions in a question data bank, uh, a question bank. Questions can be visible only to you as an author of a question, uh, or it can be visible to all other users in the platform. You can create questionnaire surveys. Uh, which basically has a set of questions. It is related usually to satisfaction or a feedback about something and uh, distribute those questionnaires to end users. That means to students, to teachers, to parents, to employees. You can create online exams and uh, quizzes. The exams have some specific characteristics like time management, like the ability to forbid a student to copy data or close down the browser and go somewhere else and set the internet about an answer. The marks of the quizzes will become a mark of an assessment and that assessment then of course can feed the gradebook. You can mark quizzes automatically, you can mark quizzes manually, you can have marking tools we can see all the marks in the grid or quiz per quiz. You can uh, also scan the results. You can have answer forms. You can scan the results and upload those to cluster. And that is what we call offline quizzes. So those quizzes are not done online. You have uh, an answer sheet. You give the, 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 the questions to the student. They sit in, in a physical room and then they mark the correct answer A, B, C, D in the answer sheet and then you can go and scan this answer sheet to, into a scanner, get the A, B, C, D answer for each question and then upload this information to cluster and mark uh, the quiz that way. You can also use the surveys to evaluate performance of educators. So teachers can be evaluated by employees uh, by the school and get an evaluation mark. You can also get feedback from students uh, about the organization, about the school, 
You can get feedback about educators. Um, you can use also the quizzes and surveys to get feedback about the admission process or any other process of the school and also about the job or the internship uh, they have done in a, in a, in a company uh, in a higher education environment. So let's go to see the demo and uh, start with, uh, presenting the things. So here I've done log on as a back office employee. In the red uh, skin, I'm a, an educator, Elaine Bork, and this skin, I'm a student. So, um, how do I start? The, the quizzes are part of the academic settings, although they are used also for surveys, so it's not 100% accurate, but for the time being, it is other than academic settings. Though, keep in mind that quiz is an independent module. If you buy academic module, you need to buy extra the quiz module. So in the quiz management section, we have some settings and then we have the quiz categories and question bank. So here, basically, it is um, only the important thing is the question bank. What is the question bank? It is the list of all questions uh, that we have stored in the system and then we start picking up questions from this bank to, and we can use them in one or multiple quizzes. The questions can be categorized in two categories. My own private questions, the questions that I have created, they can be private or public, and all public questions, which is all questions. Basically, those can be created by any other user of the system, not me, but they have the checkbox that they are public. So if I do a set, I can see uh, a lot of questions here and I can um, see that any question has a type, has a category and a level. Level is hard coded, it's basically one, two, three, four, five, and usually is level of difficulty. This is used in online exams where we want cluster to automatically select a number of questions per level of difficulty. The category it can be configured by us. Categories is the squeeze categories. We can go and create the categories. And uh, this is a method of categorizing questions into different categories. Categories can be identical to subject areas or scientific areas, can be uh, categorized with any other way we want. Um, so here you see I have some questions. Let's open one question and start seeing how or create a new one. And start seeing what a question looks like. Now, keep in mind that this is not a quiz. It's not a questionnaire. This is a question that can be used later in a, in a quiz. A question can be created independently here or can be created during the creation of a quiz. We will see this in a second. So a question has a label, a title. So label usually can be one, two, three or something else. So it can be like this. And then we put a question. Uh, this is a type. So we have three types in cluster supported. It is the multiple responses, which is single or multiple uh, multi, multi select, uh, multi choice select. So uh, if it is multiple responses, and then you can set how many allow choices you have. So if you say one, then it's single select. If you don't put anything, it's multi select. If you put three, then you can select three out of five, for example. Okay, so it is type select two answers out of these that are correct. So the type in is free text. The type in it's a different uh, question type in comparison to the rest because it doesn't. It's not marked automatically. It's free text that uh, the, the user will give as an answer. And that means that we need to read it and give it a mark. So it has to be marked later by a user, usually a teacher, an educator. Matching is, 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 is matching where we give the different answers and we say this goes with that, this goes with that, and so on. Um, so let's create a Moodle, Moodle select. We can put an info tooltip or a tooltip about information about the question where we can write any, any, anything that is uh, basically this is the actual question. OK, so we can put it whatever we want here. Uh, this is a question. Now we can put also mathematics. So let me show you uh, how we could put mathematics here. We can use this equator. You can use it from here, or you can use a tool like, um, for example, this is the, the uh, MathPix. 
So you can see I can take any question, any any mathematic. Let's take this one. And um, this is the, the scan image. This is the result. And if I press this one, I can see the the way that I can write these mathematics without doing uh, difficult things. So I can take, I can put it here and here it comes. OK, so here is the mathematics. So you can scan easily using your mobile. This is a mobile app also. You can scan it. You can take the, the whole uh, equation and you can add it here. It works also with chemistry. Uh, you can also add photos here, of course, in the same way. Um, and you can create advanced mathematics questions. Um, now, a question is related, as I said, to a category. It has a level. Let's say this is level three. And it can be related to a subject or not related to a subject. OK, those are the subjects that we have in cluster. So we can create all these subjects in cluster and then we can say that those questions are related to specific subjects. So we have mathematics year one with those questions, mathematics year two, other questions, mathematics year three, other questions and so on. Um, so. The question can have specific number of points. Now this is inherited in the quiz and it can be changed. It's also used in evaluation criteria, so you can say that we can take satisfaction evaluation or surveys or evaluation of a teacher and the best mark, let's say it's 10. So each question can be uh, count one or it can be, this can be stay empty and the answer can stay, uh, and the points can go to the answers. So the first answer has, if it's one to five, one point, two points, three points, four points, five points. That point here makes sense when we have right wrong. So the question is answered correctly, it gets points. It does, it's not answered correctly, it doesn't get point. Uh, the public is the next um, thing, which is basically if we make this question public to everybody. So this is how we create questions. Let's go now to create a quiz and see how we create questions in quiz and see some difficult quizzes uh, that have a bit more interesting um, interest for you. So go to academic task quizzes. This is what we do daily. Usually the, the question box Banks is something that is accessible by admins or back office employees. Uh, on a daily basis, as a back, as a student or as a teacher, I, I use this one. So I will do now this from a teacher point of view. So I will go to the teacher and I will go to my um, quiz management and I will go to the quizzes. Now, the first thing you see the difference between an employee and a teacher is that you see the type in a teacher is for the time being it's only assignment or test. A teacher cannot create a questionnaire that is satisfaction. Questionnaire, they can select it and deliver it if exist, but basically that is done by back office employees. So if I go to the uh, quizzes as a back office employee, I will see two types. I will be, see the survey type and the assignment and assessment type. So surveys, satisfaction quiz, evaluation quizzes, and so on, are usually created in cluster, not are usually, they are created in cluster by back office employees, not by teachers. So let's go to a teacher now portal and create C assignment or test type of quizzes. Those are used in assignments or online quizzes or online exams. So you see this is the advanced mathematics, has 10 questions. It is associated with the subject mathematics year 10, that can stay empty. In this case, it's not associated with a specific subject, but it cannot be used by uh, assignments. Who is a creator, the data is available, and the distributions. Distributions, when we create a quiz and we deliver the quizzes, every time, let's say, uh, in a physical world, you have a questionnaire or a quiz and, and a, a, a sheet of exams, and you have it in your, in your folder. You take it out, you go to the photocopy machine, you copy 20 times, you get into the class and you distribute this to the, to the, to the students. Then three months later, you take the same copy, you distribute it to another class. A year later, you take the copy, you distribute it to another class. Every time you do this, this is a distribution of the quiz. So let's edit that. Now, before I edit, sorry, I'm going back. I will do something else. I will view the quiz as it is today. So, and then we see how this looks like, how we build it. So you see here, this is a quiz with a lot of mathematics, photos. And in some areas also, you will see that even in the answers that we have photos. So this is a mathematical quiz. Let's see another quiz. 
let's see uh, the this is the extreme quiz you will notice that has several sections let's see another quiz here i will go back to back office with a survey and uh, just take uh, this this quiz you will see here that you have these areas to the left. So you have the uh, different types of quizzes. And let's see how we build those and how all these are decided. So if we're going to create a new quiz or edit an existing, let's create a new quiz. First of all, we have the title of the, of the quiz. Let's say test. Then we have the type. If it's a same assignment test quiz or survey quiz for the teacher, for the time being, it's only assignment and test. This is how many times I can uh, do the quiz. Okay, if I fail, can I do it again? So let's say I do it. If you leave it empty, then you can do it as many times you wish. Let's say I want to do it only two times. Uh, here we can say if there is a limit in time. So let's say that you have only 60 minutes to answer this quiz. Now, this is the paging. You see there is a paging per group and per question. Let's explain what the group is, what the question is. You see here below are the section group. So what we saw before here, the, this one office, facilities, teacher is a group. So a group of questions more or less. It's like a tab. Now, this group can be done the way I see it here, or I can be uh, basically just a header. It depends of how we want this to be. So this is a new group, new section. So let's name it uh, group one, G1. Save. And then we can add one more group, group two. So now I'm going to add questions out of those group, G2. Now the question is, do I want all this in one page or do I want something like this where the groups are separated? I have separate pages for each group. That information is given to cluster by this option. If it's per group, if it's nano, it's everything in one page. If it's per group, then I will have uh, for each group a separate tab. Now, if I select this one, then I will have per question separate tab. So basically what you will see here, it's for each question, one separate tab. OK, so if I have 10 questions, I can go one by one. So or it basically goes next, 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 next. So it's question, next, question, next. So it depends how I want to do it. This is a passing score when we consider the quiz to be successful or not as successful. Of course, that makes sense only for exams. It doesn't make sense for evaluation. Um, so let's say that uh, it can be 10 out of 20 or 5 out, out of 10. Uh, here we define if the quiz is associated with a subject, which is usually required if we want to use this in exams or assignments. We need to add here for which um, subject is the quiz available for. The shuffle of questions basically means that each student will get a different set of questions. There is, um, there is actually two ways of doing. Uh, so this is basically how we we we, we we, uh, we present the questions. If we push, put it in the order, I have them here because I can move them up and down or not. OK, uh, before we start the quiz, we can add a splash screen. That means basically we can add a screen that uh, we go, we put some data, some information about the quiz, like the time that is expected, the rules of the of answering this quiz, what's expected by the student and so on. And then they press, they press OK and then they start uh, the quiz and the counting time starts. Um, here is uh, an automated filtering of questions. So, if we ask, if we say, for example, that I want ten questions and in my quiz I added one hundred questions, then the system will select ten questions out of one hundred. So, in each distribution, it will select ten. I do a new distribution will be 10 different. Another distribution will be 10 different. But all students will have exactly the same questions unless I select shuffle questions. Then they will have the different questions. 
Okay, so depending on those two things, I may have the same or different questions. Another thing I can do is I can use a structure. I will show you in a second what, how structure I need to say firstly, how structure is used. This is from where until then, until when the, the, the quiz is available. If you leave it empty, it's always available. If you put specific dates, then only during that date the quiz is available. That also can be constrained by the assignment. And if you do it in both areas, uh, it is it is constrained in combination. So um, because the quizzes can be used in assignments, in the assignments also we can have delivery time for the assignment until when you can do it. Our general uh, recommendation is to leave this empty. If you use uh, you do online quizzes that is used in assignments because you can do it there. If you do it both, you can get confused because it might be that one of the two criteria are valid and suddenly the, the, the quiz is not av available to the students and you don't know why. Now, the difference between these dates and the dates in assignments is that these dates are generic for the school for this quiz and because the same quiz can be used in multiple assignments, okay, where the assignment is per class per, per case. Uh, it can be used sometimes mainly for the surveys. Uh, this is uh, how we, 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 if we take a, a question that is partially answered as a correct, if we give points or not, or all, 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 all the questions should be fully correctly answered. I give an example. I have a question uh, which has uh, multiple answers and it is multi-select, so I can select multiple answer and I say that you have to select two. So I have 10 answers and you have to select the two correct uh, uh, entries. OK, so you have 10 countries and you have to select all the countries that they don't belong in Europe. So you have to select two countries that don't belong in Europe. Uh, now, let's say that the student selects only one and the other one is wrong. Does the student get any points for that question or not? That question means that if they don't, um, um, if, they, if, if you select it, then it will get some points. OK, based on the points that you give in its, its, in, in its answer where if you if you unselect that the student will get points for that answer only if it selects two correct answers okay so the question says give me all the countries that do not belong to you, two countries that do not belong in europe and then i select two correct then i get the points i select one correct one wrong i don't get any point if i select this set this check in the later case i will get partial points this also means uh if, if it's locked after, let's say, five seconds. That means that if I close my browser or if I lose focus of, of the quiz and go to another window, to another browser, to another tab in my browser, then the system thinks that you may try to cheat and gives you five seconds. And if you are not back in five seconds, the system will just post the quiz at that moment as it is. So it will basically void your answers. OK, so it will close the quiz automatically. That means that in the notification services, I'm going back to the administration module here. You can go here in administration and configure a notification service that runs on a daily basis on the system to send some notifications related to non answered quizzes. So notification for users that did not answer a quiz after X days of the published date of the quiz. So I say you have to, to answer that quiz and I publish this today. If I put here in the comparison two and the quiz has that checkbox I presented before, then I will send to the student, for example, a notification message, please answer the quiz. OK, that will work though only if I have a direct distribution of the quiz to the students, OK, or to the employees or to the teacher, not indirect. Indirect can be done if I say, for example, that I want everybody in the institute to answer. That is an indirect, so it is not a specific line. So uh, it works only in specific uh, cases, not always, for the time being. I'm going back to the creation. Marked by educator. Now, that is a quiz that I have created, but it's not really online. It, I don't expect the students to log on and answer. 
I expect the teacher to get the results in a paper and then go and put max for that quiz. I have all the questions in the system, uh, but the math is done by the teacher. And the show results basically means that at the end, the, uh, the user, let's say the student, will be able to see the results, the final marks, how many of the questions were answered correctly, which questions are correct, which are wrong. So let's go back. Uh, ah, well, I forgot to say how I add questions, of course. So I've done these two sections. So how do I add questions? I have two ways. Either we'll retrieve questions from the database of the questions, or I will add questions using a uh, new question. So let's add a completely new question. So it is one test. I put whatever I want here. This is this belongs. This is easy. Uh, belongs to other design. It's type E. How many lines? 20 lines. If it's rich text or, or plain text, it will count up to 10 points. It's required, so I need to answer and I need to add this to the database. It is public use. So everybody can see this question. Other teachers can use it. OK, this is one way to add the question. So you can add it here and then I can ask add. Now let me add one more, which is multiple select. Two, two. Though this is not uh, obligatory, so it is multiple choices. Allow choice number two, add. Forgot to put points. Four. I want to add to the database or not to add it. Add. And then I can start putting Ashner. So this is, it gives you two points. And this is A and the, and the answer. Add question. One point. This is B. This is the answer. Those are correct, let's say. And then I have another one, which is wrong. Zero point. C and the answer here, and then another one which is uh, maybe correct or whatever, let's say zero points, D, the answer, and so on. I can use this text here, I can put copy paste, things like that, I can make it to its exit store, and so on. If I press need justification, then when I answer that, I will need to write why I give this answer. So I need, uh, you ask the student to uh, give you. Um, a bit more uh, questions, a bit, a, a bit more information about the, uh, the question. If I press here, I want to add from the database. I can select based on the level. For example. Sets and find different questions. OK, so let's take select this one. You can select actually multiple and press add. So this is a question with uh, mathematics, you see. OK, uh, and then you can you can see that this is a correct. This is a correct. You take two points. You can change that. You say in my case in this questionnaire is four points, things like that. Now questions can also if I do save. You will see that questions. Okay, let's collapse all. I have two sections. Questions can move up and down. OK. Now, one common question is how do I create similar questions? So um, that is used very much in survey. So I want the same thing again and again, the same answer. So I don't want every time to, to do a um, copy of the thing. So let me go here, go to the uh, surveys here, create a survey and I give an example. So I have the survey. In this array here, let's edit. You see, I have some questions, and always the answer is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's exactly the same thing. So how do I manage that? Now, one thing I can do is I can add a new question here, for example. Uh, sorry, from the database. I select, for example, this is survey. OK, search. So I take the first question, add it. You see it's ready. Now I can change the question. So this is three. Another question. So I don't want to add it to the database because it already exists with. So add it. I want another one. 
selects again the same, add. So this is for the first question. Now you can create a template uh, question, which is called the blade, and you can always add it and add the same thing. So basically, this is one the copy of the other. So you can copy exactly the same thing. You don't need, don't need to add the questions, the answers every time, because that can be time consuming. OK, so you, you save it to the uh, database once, and then you, you, you retrieve it, change the question, you retrieve it, change the question. And of course, if you save every time, you can have a lot of questions like this. Uh, so like that, you can make um, a quiz. So let's save it and close it. So I have a new quiz with a lot of new questions. Uh, how can I see a quiz always? I have just created. I can go here and I see the quiz here with all questions, how it looks like. All right. So now I have presented how to create quizzes. We have discussed how to create assignments and tests before uh, the teacher has created an assignment and test. It is visible to me as a back office employee. So all quizzes created by the teachers they get into this central list. That is a beauty of clustering in comparison, for example, to Google Docs and other things. It is easier to manage all things because you have the question banks, you have the things managed that are related to the subjects. So you start doing things like this. So let's edit again this one. And if you want, you can add it and connect it with the mathematics. So it is related to mathematics. Now, Let's discuss about the structure here. OK, um, but I will not do it here. I will uh, I will go back and let's find one which is called the extreme quiz, this one. OK, let's do it, edit. This quiz has 50 questions. So quite a lot. Now, however, I don't want 50, 50 questions to all my students. What I want to do is to select questions of type math level one in the section one five in the section two i want again math level two a bit more difficult questions three and in the section three two and i want i want this to be also subtle so i want different questions for per student from that collection of 50 i will select only 10 for each student uh, five, five easy, three medium, two difficult. Now, for doing that, what I need is to have the questions categorized. Now, keep in mind that the categorization of the level and everything comes from the database, but can be different per quiz, but because those, those properties are copied into the quiz level. OK, so they are in the database level, the uh, questions data bank level, but those are properties that just copied into the quiz. So like that, I can create questions that are difficult, different. So let's go now back as a teacher and use that quiz, the, the extreme quiz and the advanced mathematics quiz to start creating some assignments that students need to, um, to answer. And then we will see how we do surveys. So now we will focus on the quizzes, exams, quizzes, things like that. And then we'll go to the surveys and a few other things then at the end. So I'm, I'm a teacher. In order to use the quizzes, quizzes should be related to the subjects. Number one, if they are not related to the subjects, then I cannot really use them. I can use them, distribute them to the students. Still, there are quizzes people can answer, students can answer, but they are not used for marking. So they are not associated with a marking entity like assignment. That is the, the difference you should understand. Any quiz that doesn't have a subject associated can still be used, can be still be sent to a set of students I teach, even from different uh, subjects, different years, doesn't matter, or different programs. But they are not, we, we don't, we cannot really get these marks into the grade books. How do I do this uh, simple distribution? I can go to the quizzes. Find any quiz and distribute this quiz directly. Now, this is a simple distribution. It is not related to the to the assignment, so it is not marked. It's marked. It gets some marking, some points, but it doesn't get to the gradebook. So what what I can do here is I can say that is a 
a student. I can select students from year 10, for example, because it's associated with mathematics. OK. Uh, and I can select. Now, if I take another quiz that is not associated to a class, to a, uh, to a subject, I can do a more dynamic distribution. Let me find if there is any. This one, for example. This is a test that is not associated to any subject. So if I create a distribution in this test, you see here I can select students that I teach. The, this, this is not the list of the whole school. This is the list, uh, or is it? It is from the whole school, but I think it comes only the students I teach. Yes, not all students come, only the students I teach. OK, so I can select every, every student, so they can select students from different years. Doesn't matter. And I can distribute to those. So this is, I have a questionnaire I created there. It can be satisfaction also, questionnaire in reality, which I distribute to the students. So I can say, give me your opinion about my teaching. Can be all students I teach for more years together. It doesn't matter. Let's go now to the case that I distribute a quiz through an assignment. So I, an assessment. So this is part of the academics now. So assessment, scheduling, I need to schedule it to say from when until when students need to answer this quiz. So create new quiz. And let's say that this is for year 10. OK. Today is a day off, obviously, in my school, so I put it. But I will put that this is for a whole March to, for them to answer. OK, uh, year 10. Now, if this is uh, this is usually not required. It's, it's one configuration, I could say. Uh, quiz, I could say if it is difficult or not this quiz. And then I can select which quiz I want. So advanced mathematics, let's say. OK, or extreme quiz. OK, I can write some comments for about this test and I can make a save. That will go to all students of year 10. I forgot to put a description, so let's extreme quiz testing for maths. Now, keep in mind that you can keep one quiz with questions for all year and and you can basically have different different questions every time. OK, because it's, it takes pickups questions randomly. Uh, Provided that, of course, that uh, the students know how to answer that. So now I created the quiz. Let me check here the uh, list of students. Sorry, the list of uh, not students classes. So I see a student for year ten. So year ten. I have uh, those two. I think I can. I have logged on with this guy. Let me check. Jasper Begin. Let me check if this is correct. Yes, the first one. So, sorry, not this one. All right, here we are. So, make a refresh. Now, if this is valid, visible on my calendar and so on, it is part of the uh, information provided into the quiz. All the quizzes, though, um, come into my quiz and surveys. OK, so this is the extreme quiz for maths. So I have uh, some easy questions. If I remember correctly, some medium questions, and then some really difficult questions. Okay, so, and this is a quiz uh, automatically created. Now, if I log on to another student, I will have a different set of, of questions, okay, because they are automatically uh, handled. So let's submit this one. Yes. And let's go as a, um, as a teacher and create another quiz also. So I can see here all the different quiz I have distributed by taking the quiz types. So it's quizzes. Okay. 
uh, per subject, of course, but I can put everything. So for the all these different quizzes I have created already. OK, so let's create one more quizzes. You can see always how many students have been answered that. So it takes, um, let's say, year 10. Uh, or year, let's take year six this time. Mathematics. Quiz. Quiz mathematics. All right, let's take quiz year four, year six, test maths. Okay, uh, before I continue here, let me explain what is this instant offline quiz structure. Now, this is a case. I don't want to create a quiz with questions online. What I need basically is to create a quiz dynamically. Say this quiz has 10 questions. Each question has A, B, C, D, four answers. I uh, will give you what is the correct answer to a question. And I have the quiz in a paper. I will give it, they will answer it, and then I put the, the either will scan the answers or I will put manually the, the answers into the system to get the final mark. So this is an offline quiz. It can be either used with a scanning or it can be used with. Uh, so in this case, you basically what do you do? You say five questions. Uh, the number of answers per question, let's say there are four, A, B, C, D, and the typical points per answer is two. So it's zero to ten. OK, so if this is a question. Everything is multiple choice. This can be type in. Uh, and the correct answer here is the number two. Here is the number one. Here is the number three, number two and number one. And can all all of those have two points or I can say this is three points. This is one point in total ten. So that is a structure that is dynamic. So it's, it's basically I don't have the questions. I just have that we have four questions, five questions and how many marks each question counts. And that is uh, when we press this this quiz. Now I can use as either the dynamic. Uh, so this is the auto quiz creation answers only or I can discard that and use uh, this quiz mathematics, which I don't remember actually what questions it has. I can put some comments if I want. Uh, and then I can save it. Students will get it. I will do save and mark now. So what I will do now is I will be able to see how the I can see the answers of this quiz. Now that answers can automatically filled in by the students or I can give them myself. Like that, and then I go to 100%. OK, uh, so I can start putting answers like this. Now, if I, if I have too many students or too many columns, that gets very big, then the form changes. Let me show you this. Let me create now an, um, a large quiz. The large quiz, let me check the quizzes. I don't remember the which uh, subjects is related. So this is a quiz with 60 questions. All must be answered by all students. So let's say uh, that is a very big thing. It will get that grid very big. So I want a different view of, of showing that. So um, let's take the uh, my list of quizzes here. And the last quiz is, let's search um, for the lunch. I think it's the lunch, if I remember correctly. Is it? No, it's not lunch, sorry. Uh, ah, this is big math quiz, sorry. It's mathematics year six. So let's go and do mathematics year six, big math quiz. And I will give an answer to that. So, uh, Scheduling Mathematics Year 6. Create new quiz. Quizzes, OK. Math 6, long quiz. OK. And this is big math quiz. OK, it's be on the calendar. Starts, let's say, first and end of uh, March. OK, um, we don't care about the rest. Exam period is third term, things like that. I will press save and mark first of all to see how this looks like. 
So you see, it is not the way it was before uh, because it gets very, very difficult. Too. So if I press mark, I can see the answers given by the students. So let's log on with uh, one of those students. So I think Grixty is in this uh, Frankie Grixty, if I remember correctly, here. So let's log on with Grixty. If I remember correctly, see Grixty is S27, if I'm not mistaken. Now log on as Grixty. So you see the quizzes are here. And I think should be also the big math and so on somewhere, but instead of searching here, let's go to the list of quizzes. And uh, a lot of quizzes here, so let's find the, the big math quiz, this one. And I start answering, I will not answer the whole because 60 questions, it will take ages. So I can start putting some, some answers here. OK, and so on. Now, make submit, yes. Now I go back to the uh, marking here and open and uh, maybe I did the wrong quiz. I should be able to see my answers here. I don't. Let me check. Uh, this is the answer quiz. Anyway. Um, let, let me also... Um, so here I should be able to see now I'm somehow confused. Maybe I went to the wrong student. Doesn't matter. So I should be able to see the questions here and the marks you get in each question, which of course I can uh, select like this also. Okay. Uh, so I can give the answers that student has given, or I can see the answers like this. Uh, and then by pressing save, the mark will come here. So let me put some marks. Now which one is it correct? We are bad. It's equals to. Three, two, two. Ah, it seems to be all wrong. <laughs> anyway. Um, and then I get the mark on the end. If, if I get the mark correctly, it will come there. Um, let's go now to see a bit, a uh, few other things related to the quizzes as a teacher. So, in, um, I can see the quiz answers. OK, so um, if I press quiz answers. And then uh, I can go, for example, into the um, any of those like this one. I think I got answers, not that many. Let's go. Let's go this one. So here are the answers. I can see the answers that each student has given. I can also see the submission data. And from here, I can review what they have submitted. OK. I can also print it. I can edit, so I can change the answers if, if I'm allowed. That is a matter of privilege, so I can give the points, different points. Or uh, basically, I cannot edit the answer. I can answer edit only the points given. And I can see statistics. So, like, okay, what is this? Is not answered at all. This is the mark. Unsuccessfully 60%, successfully 3, 30%, not answered 10%. When this is done, so I have the full information about all the answers uh, given by um, this. Maybe another one, let me see. Try to find one with some questions, with a number of questions. But it seems to be that we don't have that many. Let's try one more time. Ah, sorry for that. Here, yeah. no. 
let's use them in this one. It's only one, doesn't matter. Um, here, if you press this, it will give you the answers per question. Now, it doesn't look nice because there are no answers, um, but it will give you the answers. Uh, we, can, we could do the same thing, of course, as a back office employee, so which I should have done it because in the surveys we can have more information, I think. So if we go to surveys here, OK, um, we can. Uh, and as a back office, we have the quiz answers. It's exactly the same thing that the teachers have. Surveys. Uh, let's take student satisfaction survey, for example. All the answers. Answers per question. You can see what we have got and so on. OK, so this is uh, what I can do about the surveys. Now, let's go now to see a few other things related to surveys, evaluation, satisfaction and so on. In the settings here. You will see. Sorry. That we can define few questions to be available for admission. OK, in reality, I can add multiple questions. Um, questionnaires that are going to be available for admission surveys. In reality, those are general surveys that can be done by the secretary also. So if this is. Uh, the uh, the setting, then if I go, for example, to a student, let me open the student here. As a back office employee. And this student has just been through the admission process. I can go. And. Give. Assign a survey to this student, so I say this is a, a answered by parents. By that parent, by the mother. This is a questionnaire that they answered. Now we have customers, for example, that they do this and they have it in a tablet and then they give it to the to the customer to give it an answer when they stand in front of them on the admission front office or in another meeting, for example. So you can do surveys for meetings. Um, and give their feedback. And they can give it for specific student. OK, and they can write a few things and so on, depending on how you want this to be. Now, the same thing you can do it. In the student list, so you can go to the student list. And give surveys. You can select a one or more students and you start. You can start giving answers. So you can do it assign survey from here. You don't have to get into the student to do so. OK, and you can say who answers that the guardian, the parent the student, things like that. OK, so this is a way to order uh, the survey to, to the student, to add surveys to the student. Now let's go to another area where is how we can evaluate the performance of teacher or how parents can evaluate the satisfaction. Let's start with that firstly, how parents can evaluate the satisfaction about the school. OK, for that is a work that the administration can do on the back. So they can have a quiz, which is a survey, which we need to distribute that. So let's distribute uh, a satisfaction survey. So let's say uh, this, this survey. We can press distribution, create a new distribution, deliver that one, and say this is a, a maths school survey. And here is when until when people can do it. So let's start for the whole maths in April and then here is who answers that students educator parents or employees so let's say parents all parents or specific parents let's say specific parents who so we can say I want all parents of uh, year one to answer that select all and also I want parents year two to answer that so select all so now year one UT parents are going to answer this question. Also, let's add also year year four. I think Greeks is year four, and we are already ah we are not logged on as a parent. Are we logged on as a parent somewhere? No. So we will log on. Okay. 
So let's put here four also. Sets. I think Grix is here. Check. Yeah, six. Yes. Select all. So all these are going to answer. This is when I say that you select one by one who is going to answer. In this case, notification can uh, work for that student, for that uh, users. If they don't answer, they can receive a notification if you enable that in the notification service. And they are going to, uh, because they are parents, they will go and answer about their institute. So now I've created one survey for parents to do so. Let's create one more that I will send the same questionnaire to the students. So I say students, all students, they will evaluate their educators. So that will answer that question. So let's do it with another another survey. Not with that one. So another another questionnaire. So let's say here we have the student satisfaction survey. I will distribute this. And we name it evaluate your teacher. Survey. Match 2022. So it will start first and end of March. All students, they will evaluate educators. You can also evaluate mentors. For you that you don't remember what mentor is in cluster, any student can be assigned to a mentor, to advisor. Okay, the advisor is set up in the student form and is here. Okay, so Denzel in this case. So, they will uh, answer a survey for the educator. So let's go firstly to the student, to Grixty, for example. Make a refresh. And go to the surveys. OK, and should be uh, evaluate. Uh, Evaluate your teachers if they must answer. Ah, this is the pop up. Why do I have this one? If I press cancel, I go back. I don't start. You see? Why do I have this one? Because you will see here in this questionnaire. In the edit. I have the uh, splash screen enabled. OK, we can write whatever you want here. It's rich text, rich text. So. Splash screen start. And then I can start putting this one. Satisfied, satisfied. This one. Uh, next. So I go facilities, next one. This one, this one. And then I can go teachers, this one. And then I can submit for this teacher. Yes. And then I'm going to go to the next teacher. Go office. And then I can submit for that teacher. OK, but there are required questions. Well, here. Submit. Yes. And then I can go to my next teacher. So you see the teacher's list is getting smaller and smaller. So I answer one by one for each teacher. Let's log on as a parent now. I think we haven't logged on as a parent before. Uh, the parent is P27, I think. And then I can move to English, sorry. And then I go to my surveys, sorry, no, don't click, surveys. And then this is a survey I did before. 
So if I answer the quiz, it's about the institute. So I can answer that for the institute. Now, I can do also to answer per student. So things like that they are a bit more complex. And here you see there is a timing also. So I have 29 minutes to answer that. 20. So um, you can do things like that. Submit quit anonymously means that basically my name is not presented anywhere. It's saved with no user data on the back. And it does so. Um, so let's go to the last uh, thing I want to present for today, which is related to evaluation of teacher performance. So here again, uh, we will start with the quizzes. Or surveys, actually. And we have teacher evaluation. You see here, we have two check boxes. This evaluation related to the teachers, to educators, or to employees. Okay, it's how it counts. And then I can distribute that. For the time being, employees can evaluate teachers. Okay. Um, so, Let's create. Let me check. I'm correct. So we were not here. Evaluate teacher distribution. Yes. Created distribution. And I want the specific employee or empl all employees, all employees, or a specific one. Let's get uh, which one we have open. We have any Donald Smith. Let's take this one. Um, so Donald, Donald Smith. I want this to evaluate all educators. Save. Okay. Not again. Period of time. And now. This one, if it goes to the uh, quizzes, my distributions, the quiz I have to answer. Uh, answer question. I can have a teacher here, start giving answers. Okay, submit quiz, yes. Next teacher. Submit quiz. Yes. Next is if I think that's enough. And submit quiz. Yes. So if I go to the quiz here. Go to quiz answers. And go to surveys. And go to valuation analysis. Sorry, valuation analysis. But I think I, I selected wrong. Wrong. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Give me a second. I'm going back. Surveys. I want the uh, evaluation teacher. Search this one. Yes. This is okay. Evaluation analysis. So. So here you see the points that each teacher has got. Okay, and you can see who has given this one. What is the points he got it? Uh, of course, you can find who has good points, bad points, things like that. Um, and the total points here, so you can see who is better, who is the worst. This is the best teacher I have. This is the worst, and so on. And if it's good, pass, fail, based on the market scale. Where do I define that? Uh, that is defined in, if I'm not mistaken, in the quiz management question, quiz settings. Here in the evaluation analysis, the rates from 1 to 10. And this is if it's going to be average or sum of the points of all max. Okay, so this is part of the evaluation of the teachers. Uh, let's now go back and discuss what is coming on. 
things that will be in the new version. So one of the things we will have is a copy of quizzes, so a whole quiz can copy it, and also a, a back office employee can copy quizzes and make them available to different teachers. So if somebody has created a, a, a quiz, a teacher, and want other teachers to see that quiz, a back office employee can send this to different teachers. Uh, we have new rights about what teachers can do uh, on marking, changing marks, changing things, things like that. Uh, we have a better question uh, filtering capability on the question bank, so we can filter questions with different ways much better. Uh, the form of marking has been improved in speed and also now we support rich text and mathematics, things like that when you, you see them. And uh, we have uh, the, the different UI, this is already presented to you. For large data quiz assessment, this is already uh, published. In the next version, within the next few months, uh, we want to, to enable the shuffling of answers. Today we have shuffling of questions. Answers have always A, B, C, D, it's always with the, with the same order. If we want to have the question being steady and the, the A, B, C, D to be shuffled, this is, not, this is not supported today, but we are going to support it. Uh, we want to improve the categorization of the questions in the question bag with more capabilities and more, um, so you can have a much more richer interface of doing things like that. We want now to be able to do surveys. Uh, so you send surveys and satisfaction questionnaires for events, for courses, for lessons, for sessions, for extracurriculum activities. So teachers also be able to do this much better. Um, we want to have the ability for admission users like uh, candidates when they log into admission portal to be able to do online exams or answer survey questions. The, the one that we now presented that we do it as a back office employee to be able to push this, this survey or question uh, questionnaire or quiz to the admission users. So it can be used for online exams, uh, multiple choice online exams like the level of uh, language knowledge. Uh, things like that, so they can, they can do all this. Um, we will also en enable online address exams that are quiz based. Today, of course, we, we support that, but that interface is not, you have to be uh, registered in order to be able to answer those ex online exams. Uh, we want also to improve in the logon to be able to push the student directly to answer a questionnaire. So the, you, you give them, instead of going to the quizzes and doing from there, directly to get it. And uh, we want to create assignments uh, with assessments with quizzes, but to, not to select the whole group or the whole class, to select specific students. So only those students will answer those. Those are a few of the things we want to improve, plus few other things uh, related to uh, uh, improved distribution. So teachers to evaluate teachers, uh, employees to evaluate only specific teachers, uh, based on hierarchy and things like that. Uh, we want also to add this in the next few uh, months. So that's all for today. Uh, I was um, four hours and 10 minutes, I think. Uh, so if you have any question, feel free to answer now. Um, let me know. Let me know uh, if there is any question now and uh, to answer that. So I see that you are quiet today. <laughs> Might be that explained everything perfectly or not. I got some thank you uh, post. <laughs> thank you very much also.
So the recording will be available to all of you and everybody who has been registered to this uh, to this video and will be published to the to the YouTube. So uh, I see that we don't have any question. Um, I will uh, hug up here. Thank you very much for your time today. Hopefully it was uh, useful. Uh, if you have uh, an opinion of a next webinar, please feel free to email us um, or send us now a, a message here. We will be very happy to organize a new webinar quite soon. A new one. Uh, uh, a question came last minute. Uh, can we create essays? Yes. Um, if you mean uh, essays uh, like I want to write a paragraph about something. Uh, this is how I, I understand the question. Let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, the, yes, questions can be typing, have be type uh, of typing, typing, so writing. So if a question is writing, then basically the. Um, so let me go to a quiz here. So let's say that I want in one of those to uh, make a typing uh, question. OK, so I will add a new question here. And then I, the, I can say that this is a typing. OK, and I want this to be 20 lines. Rich text. So you can write, write up, to, up to 20 lines. This is a section I give, OK, in reality. So uh, I can write something here about what the question is, the label, and that is then presented to the student as a typing to write an essay. OK. And that should be marked then by the teacher. So they, they will see it and then mark it. They mark it. By the way, if you want to create something that is an essay that is written in a paper, scanned and sent to us, that doesn't involve quizzes. That involves only assignments. So you create an assignment where you the, the student has to return a document can be an essay written in word written back or can be uh, a, a scanned image that is returned back to the teacher that doesn't need a quiz this is a, just a simple assignment so you go here and you create an assignment here the difference is that you don't go to quizzes you go to assignments in this case the, the assignment basically gives you in reality, what it does, it is switch on the capability for the uh, student to return back work. OK. OK, I think the question was uh, uh, answered correctly or fully. Um, any other question? All right. Uh, of course, feel free to send me an email if you have any question. I will be glad to answer. So thank you very much, guys. Enjoy the day.